Welcome, Facebook and YouTube, to the lounge at the Alexa World Fair here at the Alexa Conference. We're at the very end. Yep. This is my friend John, who we met at CES, yeah. and uh, I was very engaged in our conversation. And uh, not only are you telling a great story about earplay, but Alexa says that you are the developer of the year. So congratulations. Thank you. Come Thank on. you very much. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, kind of an honor being in the conference and you know, uh, you know, being a part of all of this. Uh, to receive the developer of the year was uh, something I wasn't expecting. It's <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. So tell, uh, now we're just going to have a conversation, so everybody here, you're just kind of okay. being a part of our conversation, but tell, tell us a bit about yourself, EarPlay, and why you're here at this conference. Yeah, so, <clears throat> I mean, I was kind of a, you know, artist in my 20s, I did a lot of theater, I ended up with an MFA in playwriting, and, and then that kind of got me into game writing, and I was really interested in conversational systems. <clears throat> I founded EarPlay, at the time it was called Reactive Studios, just with this goal of taking a radio drama, yeah. like uh, which I was a fan of, like old time radio dramas, uh, and imagining putting a player inside it where they could make choices and they could be inside a narrative, the narrative conceit of a radio drama, sort right. of interactive audiobook style. And the voice user interface was the way, in my opinion, to do that. So I thought, yeah. well, how can we do that? And it was around the time of the series, 2013. Wow. Um, and you know, there were rudimentary versions of. ASR, automatic speech recognition, right. and NLP, and we just kind of hacked together what we could. We did that Kickstarter, it funded the, you know, the, what was the very first version of Codename Cygnus, and we put it out there, you know, like an indie studio, right. and, you know, we launched at, like, PAX Prime, and got a lot of attention. People just thought it was a really cool idea. Um, we were expecting, you know, old-time radio drama enthusiasts, or choose your own adventure, like right. my age group, who, right. you know, grew up on those in the 80s, right. but it turned out there was, a, like, a very youthful exuberance for it. We had, mm. like, our, our, like, 90% of our downloads were, like, 13 to 24, and so, okay. you know, we, Kind of started to see what later on Alexa would prove and show is that right. there is just a demand for using a voice interface. People yeah. really enjoy it. People really get a lot out of the power of audio. Right. Um, and so, you know, we kind of bootstrapped and doubled down on like keeping going. We had built a little bit of back end technology for delivering these audio files to an iOS, you know, we right. built our own engine for this sort of thing. Yeah. And again, in 2013, it was rudimentary. Fast forward a few years, Alexa comes out and we were able to deploy to that, and suddenly we were making the earplay skill happen on Alexa, and it was getting us a lot of right. reviews and ratings. Alexa kind of connected with us. We started talking about how to do more of this. Um, it wasn't something necessarily that the platforms were expecting. They weren't, you know, they were developing assistants. They weren't necessarily developing interactive audio systems. And right. so, uh, you know, to see like their platforms being used in a way for entertainment that, that wasn't you know acknowledged before that, right. it was really exciting to them. And so we got a lot of early promotion um, and enabled us to, to, to work on partnerships to, with IPs to do really big kind of cool experiences early on that were longer form. They weren't just right. like, hey, I'm asking to turn on the lights or off. I'm, I'm asking to jump into a story and be a part of it for five, 10, 15 minutes at a time. And you, you go back like a couple of years, that you know was kind of like people thought five to minute, seven minutes, that's right. That's all you get with the skill. But now, you know, we're seeing really long, hour long or more <coughs> experiences. Right. In your play, we've, our mission has always been to look at this, this sort of experience as a new medium, yeah. uh, interactive dramatic audio, right. uh, specifically interactive audio, but we'd like to, you know, to make it dramatic. That's yeah. part of our, our, our shtick. But um, we, and our goal <coughs> is to just make that happen in the world to enable that to become, you know, its own style of expression, its own new medium. Um, and we've always seen like the things that we do as needing to have like a high quality bar to really push that and to, to innovate as much as possible, you know, to, to, to make it possible for more and more. Oh, thank you very much. For, sorry, my throat is a little hoarse from the, the convention. Hey man, just try to be a good host. Yeah, you know? I appreciate it, And man. whoever says no to a cough. Drop, yeah, I you know, know, perfect. <laughs> cough yeah, or no cough. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so we, you know, along the way, this sort of way of doing things, a lot more people are getting into it. We're seeing some studios pop up, some of whom have been doing it as long as we have, like okay. Xandra, um, and that are making amazing experiences like the, the, the Westworld one they did this right. year. And so, you know, to us, that's that's awesome. We want to see more and more of that because, uh, again, we feel like it's this medium that needs to be nurtured. Right. And, and it's a new form of expression that I think in the future is going to be like second nature, but right now it's new and innovative and cool. Right. 
So um, for us, you know, being out, uh, getting the recognition, it, it's, it's important because I feel like we want to continue to be a leader. We also want to lead by like providing tools and resources to others. Right. Uh, and I think that's where Peer Play is going, is we started out as a maker yeah. uh, and an innovator in that sense. And over time, that became kind of like acting like a studio when we're doing deals and partnerships and right. working with IPs. Um, and we weren't really seeing that scale uh, we were like kind of building up our our, our uh, sort of portfolio, but we were we were getting, getting kind of burned out because we were right. we were making these blockbuster experiences, but we were also developing you know the technology and the tools that enables that stuff to happen. So like the software, yeah, the software like foundation, so you can pump these out without you know one off thing every single exactly. time. Exactly, and so, so you're kind of building your your foundation our infrastructure as yeah. you're doing specific projects. Exactly, and that's been kind of burning us out a bit. So we've always had like a VU X engine, like a voice experience engine okay. that runs these experiences from the cloud, right. Right? Um, and uh, you know that needs constantly kept up. You know when Alexa comes out with new features, like the ability to display images or right. videos, like oh wow, we gotta we gotta code that in so that we can deploy that kind of you know those kind of uh, 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 files and videos and, and audio, so we deploy that to these skills. Yeah. So we, you know, we're always constantly keeping that up. Um, you know, something like monetization comes along. Wow, we're right. going to be building that as a product into, our, or building it as, as a feature into our product, right. and enabling, uh, you know, the, the tools that we have to work seamlessly with those new features like yeah. monetization. Yeah. Okay. Now, is this award? For one specific thing you did, or no. is it for your organization yeah, it's, altogether? Yeah, it's for the organization over the course of 2018. We okay. had, you know, just a huge year. It started out with being one of the first monetized skills when that beta launched. We did uh, Ultimate History Quiz. Right. And we did uh, three questions a day for over 300, well, we're still doing it, but, you know, for a whole year. Waste Audio with a SAG actor. Every month put out a pack of 50 questions to purchase. Okay. And that's just one skill, and we ran right. that all year. We also uh, we also launched uh, you and the Beanstalk when the you know free time for kids and the Echo right. Dot for kids came out. We were a launch partner uh, with Alexa at that time, okay. so that was a you know like a good thirty minute experience that can be played over and over again in awesome. about an hour or two of content. We launched that. We launched uh, one of the first like story monetization skills, uh, yes. Jurassic World Revealed. That was alongside the, you know the release of. Uh, the movie that yes. came out this summer. So let me just pause for a second. Oh, yeah. So I sat down. Oh yeah. I grabbed the headset. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm looking at these four things. We're like getting ready to, you know, go live on Facebook and YouTube. And yeah. for those that are tuning in, thank you for your attention. And I hope that you get value out of our conversation. And I, I grab and I just say, to, it's on mute, so I can say it now. You know, I just put these on Alexa, visit Jurassic World, and it starts ringing. I hear a phone, and I'm like, okay, interesting start. And I, I was engaged from second one. Oh, great. I'm glad to hear that. I, and then That's I thought to myself, ah, I got to do this interview. I can't finish. <laughs> so it's a freemium or a it's a, it's free with an in-app purchase. Yeah, you get So free, talk to yeah. us about the consumer experience for yeah. something like Jurassic World. I download it. I listen to the first chapter and then. Yeah, so um, the idea, it's, it's based off of a model that, that came out of Telltale Games okay. uh, and some other uh, story games and also sort of the a free to play experience. The idea that you can download, play some for free, uh, you get like the first chapter, for example, you get the beginning of the story, you get to figure out who you are, what the stakes are, what's going on. The idea being that the bulk of the content is behind a paywall. Okay. Meaning if you enjoy that, you're you know, you're know willing to play that free content as much as you want, but if you want the full you know, one to two hour experience, then you have to pay a, a flat rate, and then the whole rest of the story is yours, you can play it over and over again as much as you want. Right. Uh, and that was sort of the first uh, version of that that came out. We actually, I mean, to be honest, that's actually how Codename Signus worked back in 2013. Wow. But that was also, again, on, on iOS, uh, with a sort of a, a you know, more premium kind of content, a right. more common uh, and known. And so, right. you know, we, we thought that it worked really, really well. Codename Signus will also some similar stuff here. That's awesome. Like stuff, right? That's awesome. Let's talk a bit about the future. I mean, one of the things that you got me just, <laughs> I, I was like, I'm not using John's side. Because I'm just going to listen to everything he's talking about. So obviously it had to do with the Bose headset yeah. and so many other things. But like, let's talk about the future, not just what you guys are working on, but the future of voice. What's voice in five years? Voice 2024. Yeah. Let's, you're the visionary. Take us on a journey. Well, so voice, you know, it's a new user interface. It's a new right. way of computing yeah. uh, by intera of interacting with 
the computer. And I always like, when I talk about the vision, I, I like to step back a bit and think about, well, what, what led us to this? And first, there were punch cards. Yep. Then there was, a, you know, like a, a type, a parser interface with typing <coughs> and a keyboard. And then that moved forward. And eventually, <coughs> eventually it was, you know, a, a mouse that could be moved around and clicked on the screen. <coughs> and then we have touch. And right. now we have voice. And I think right. voice, out of all of those, the biggest leap is voice. Because right. everything before that is about proximity and, and uh, touch. Right. And every, now it's the first frictionless experience. Yes. You can use voice. Um, so with that context, I think that we're not talking about just interacting with assistants. Assistants have come along and they're kind of the first wave. You're right. interacting with Siri. You're interacting with... Um, uh, Alexa, you're interacting with Google Assistant. Right. Um, other assistants are going to start popping up from different companies right. inside cars. Cars are going to want their own right. assistant. Different appliances are going to want to have their own assistant. We're going to see some of that happen. But really, this is all, it's almost just like this is the phase where you have concierge, uh, concierges that are controlling your access to a deeper web. It's what I call right. the frictionless web. It's the version right. of the web that is accessible with the voice. And I think that is going to be just one layer. It's not going to be separated. And, and we're gonna to tend to look at the assistants like browsers, right. like, you know, Netscape, Interactive, right. or uh, sorry, Internet Explorer, you know, right. and so on, and now Google Chrome. And I feel like there's also this notion that the devices kind of matter right now, which they do. For now. For now. Right. But I think that's the thing is there's there's this, this, this slow, um, I don't know, evolution, where the devices just kind of float to the background, like we are not even aware that they're there anymore. We're just become comfortable with the idea that there are just microphones around us every day, right. and using my voice and, and having it like voice printed so it knows right. who I am, I can just speak out loud and connect to that internet, and connect to my content, connect right. to my accounts, and just operate uh, an operating system right. with my voice. That is something we're, that's, that's coming along very quickly, it's not tomorrow, it's not right. like maybe in a year, but it's like we're talking five years from now or so, that is this future. And I think that those who are preparing for that future are looking at skills and actions as voice services, like right. or as as, um, as web services that are delivered by a voice service. So, right. you know, you don't think of it as like, hey, this is an app. You think of it like, this is like a web page with multiple, right. uh, you know, tentacles <laughs> right. of, of, uh, of interactivity. Where do you think it goes with headsets? Or I mean, yeah. headsets because we're talking Bose. Yes. Contact lenses is most likely yeah. where we progress. Yeah. Like, but talk to and me I about the multiplying, <coughs> multiplying factor yeah. that voice does to visual as yeah. things begin. So to there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of talk about multimodal, which is cool. People are like, you know, need to access stuff through screens, and I think, you know, uh, that's interesting, and I think it's a necessary step. But I think. More interesting is when voice becomes embedded inside AR, it becomes right. embedded in, inside, because right now what we're doing is we're learning what is this new voice user interface, right. but it's it's sort of disconnected from what you would call like, uh, uh, like maybe even a more fully immersive experience of, right. of, of like the real world, be able to move around and do whatever you want, You're kind right. of tied to a device like right now, that's what right. you're saying. So, Bose in particular is doing some really interesting stuff with audio AR, which is like one further step. Right. It's not like taking it all the way into VR, or taking it all no. the way into like a visual AR, right. but it's it's the it's the idea that, that you should be able to move around in the world and experience AR as a supplement to your reality. Right. Uh, and you know that's been announced, and you know they're they they have their sort of the, what they call the Bose frames are shipping, and we're uh, connected with them, uh, and we're going to be partnering on some really cool stuff. I can't talk too much about it. What I can say is that that you know. What if I what if I didn't listen? Uh, what if you didn't? Well, I mean. You, 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 what if only they yeah, could hear? Well, what you know <laughs> from the frames is that they're developing you know a system whereby location matters, yeah. where uh, uh, where ha, you know where gestures matter. Right. That that these these frames and headsets are able to uh, communicate to like an audio web of information that yeah. is location based, um, and and I think that's a really important step into taking the newer inputs like voice and gesture out into the world. Uh, to, to, and that gets us close to what I was describing earlier, which is this like, there is an, like an underweb, like a frictionless web that's there that we're communicating with. Yeah. And um, from my perspective, you know, we've always been stories that you play with your voice, but uh, more importantly, I think what we are is interactive audio, meaning your inputs, right. you're able to step inside a story and immerse yourself in the audio. 
And so taking you know our, our, our audience out into the world to be able to do that wherever they want to, you know, whether it's mobile or headset or glasses or whatever it is they're using, I think that's to us a really cool thing for 2019 and 20 right. that's going to be happening. And from there, it's really tough to predict what's going to happen from there, but I know it's going to be big. I know that once we start, you know, hearing feedback about what it's like to go have a story experience while you're walking down the street, um, or, you know, to have a supplemental reality where it feels like, you know, something is happening, you know, that's fictional, even though right. it's not, um, you know, we're, we're ready to kind of take that input that we get from people and, and, and to always be on the cutting edge because we feel like, you know, there's no sitting, you know, there's no sitting here resting and saying, oh, we're going to just rinse and repeat every time with, with these kind of experiences. It's going to evolve so rapidly, and we are, are te because we're building a product and technology, we have that luxury of being able to keep moving forward with the tech. And that, again, that's why we, you know, yes. want to work with people like Bose who are going to right. move to the next level. Right? Yes, absolutely. So, how about project out as far as you're comfortable? Like, what does two generations from now look like? Oh, like our grandkids, our great grandkids. What is, how does, when voices like electricity, running water, and carpet? Yeah, yeah. Like, because this is a motivating factor for us to drive forward in this industry. Oh, yeah. This is a motive, like the vision is a factor for why folks watching on YouTube yeah. or Facebook or it gets shared on LinkedIn and they see it in a week or in a year. This is the, the vision is what will motivate them to be like, I'm going, I want to create that future. So what's the future that could be as a voice? So I think it, it's interesting because, and I don't, you know, I'm just kind of speculating here, but right. we have this, we have a very... You can't be wrong yeah. for years. Well, no, but, but I think there, there's <laughs> yeah. a very... And nobody's going to remember what you said if you are wrong. So there, until now, there's been a very solid division between observer and participant. Yeah. Uh, first of all, there's just flat linear media you're right. watching passively, and then things like Twitch come along. It's like, well, they're... There's observers and there's participants, but there's a tighter connection. Yes. And, you know, things like VR and AR are going to erase that notion entirely. And, we're, I, and I don't know if you've seen that TikTok is a very interesting video app where we're even starting to blur that line where, like, you can chain videos and, like, someone can make a video and then people can mash up and incorporate bits of videos with each other and react off each other. Where, you know, blurring that line of, like, who's really... The, uh, the participant or the performer, right? And who's the observer? And it's kind of like, like becoming a cycle, and it, mm. it's both are happening at the same time. And I feel like, you know, we always have had the notion that we want the participant to feel like they're immersed in this situation, but they're still kind of observers. And, and if you were to watch somebody playing one of our experiences, you would be an observer watching them play. You really could influence them. We're going to see that just flip upside down in about 10 years or so, yeah. or, or we're slowly going to move towards that direction. Because once you're in VR and you're having an experience, if somebody else is there, they can be both an observer and a participant. Right. So if you can imagine like what it's like to be in a talk show and just uh, be kind of an audience member and there while it's taking place in AR or VR, you know, that, that's an interesting experience. What happens when, um, you know, if, let's say like a improvisational plays or improvisational games where you know you don't necessarily know who's in charge or what's going on imagine like participating in a murder mystery and you're an audience member or you're a participant or, and I feel like there, there are these lines that have been you know very clearly drawn for a long time about right. what's what's art and what's not and what's what's performance and what's observation that's really really and, good yeah and I mean I, again it's like I'm just kind of like riffing and you know no, talks. It's, it's very awesome. theoretical philosophical but I, I just, That's what I'm going you know, for, I don't, so. yeah, yeah, and I don't know what will happen. I just know that something along those lines is going to change the it way is. that content is created and yep. the way people experience content. That's and right. I'm happy to be part of that in some way as, awesome. as we roll forward. <laughs> what's the best way to get a hold of you, your play? Yeah. Can people work with you? Like, what's the yeah. what's the option? But this is kind of the conclusion, so you're welcome for this amazing time we've had with <laughs> thank John. Thank you guys for watching. So, John, as, as we kind of wrap up, yeah. thanks for all your insights. Yeah. I'm, I, I probably end up watching this because, yeah. you know, doing the interview, I don't get to, it's, it, it's a little different because I'm trying to, oh, next question. You're, you're a participant observer. I am, yeah, but I, I think what you share was really valuable. So thanks. how do people get a hold of you and, and yeah, how so, do they engage? Um, yeah, so I mean, there's a couple ways. Like I'd say, like, if you just want to try what we're doing, like if you're near an assistant, you can just say, you know, Alexa or, open ear play and that yeah. will get you kind of the demo to kind well, of check out where we're at and then you can try your stuff there's our website earplay.com e-a-r-p-l-a-y.com which 
gives a little overview. It's like kind of outdated, but it's, it shows where we are. And there's some some uh, emails that you can get used to get in touch with us. I think that if you want to work with us, I think talent at earplay.com is the best place to start. Um, we are sort of in a private beta at this, st at this stage with our tools, but we're looking for you know expert content creators, people who know how to write and design these things, audio people. We're always looking to touch base with those folks. So you know, by all means, reach out. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, John. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna try to get out of this chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. YouTube. I'm loving you right now. Take Email care. me for a list of reasons why. <laughs> cool. That was awesome.